want each and every one of us to rise up on your feet as I recognize and celebrate my father and your father, our teacher, our mentor, our priest, the presiding pastor of Lawrence Spring Chapel International, and the convener of Turning Point Global Family. I thought you say I love my daddy. Hallelujah. Can we have a seat in God's most glorious presence? Daddy was wearing white in that picture. I'm also wearing white this morning. Hallelujah. This is our Thanksgiving service. We understand that Thanksgiving is a multiplying factor. It's a spiritual and a supernatural key. I can't explain it to you, but everything you thank God over increases. I was telling us in Word and Power service on Tuesday that honor is a spiritual key. Whatever you honor, you begin to look like. Thanksgiving is also a spiritual key. Whatever you thank God for naturally multiplies. Therefore, the first Sunday of every month, we thank God for the month so that God multiplies us through the month. Today is our Thanksgiving service, so I want you to be intentional about your praise today. I want you to take that situation you're going through and thank God over it. Do you understand what I'm saying? I want you to take that impossible case and dance before God over it and watch God do his work. This is our month of what? Shining more and more. So I have brought a word that the Holy Spirit dropped into my spirit man and I've titled it the mandate of light. The mandate of light. My ministration this morning will be a short one because we have come here to dance. How many of us are ready to dance this morning? We have come here to celebrate. How many of us are ready to celebrate this morning? We have come to worship the splendor of God. And I will give us ample time to do so. But before the dancing and the rejoicing, some people have been rehearsing their steps since yesterday night. Aha, this is how I will do it before God. Before we go into that mode, let us sit before the word of God. Please listen to this. The mandate of shining is a godly mandate. We were created to beam the light. Our Father and the Lord was telling us that light creates attraction. On Thursday, Prayer Mountain, he gave the example of a light bulb on a rainy day. You put a light bulb on a rainy day in the dark. What happens? Flies, termites, insects start hovering around the light because there's a characteristic of light that attracts. Listen, every aspect of God is defined by light. Every aspect, everywhere you turn God, you see light. God is made up entirely of light. First John chapter 1 verse 5. Please give me the message version. First John chapter 1 and verse 5. It says, this in essence, essence is the message we had from Christ and we are passing unto you. It says, God is light, pure light. There is no trace of darkness darkness in him this god is made up of light pure light no trace of darkness in him i speak over your life and over your destiny there shall be no trace of darkness in jesus name the thing that the devil has been using against you fails today in jesus name may god's light begin to emanate from your destiny in jesus name God stood before a hopeless, a shapeless, a confused, and a dark universe. And all God needed to do was command light. When God was commanding light, what happened was that the essence of light passed from him into a confused world. God stood before a universe that was hopeless and he decreed light and the scripture records that there was 
Genesis chapter 1, verses 3, and I'll read the B part, the first portion of verse 4. It says, Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Verse 4. And God saw the light that it was good. Light is good. Light is good. I speak the goodness of God in your life and in your destiny via the light of God in Jesus' name. Isaiah 60 verses 1 and 2. Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 and 2. Can we read together? Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you. I thought you say amen. And his glory will be seen upon you. Get ready. This month is the month of shining. Whoever laughed at you, laughed too soon. Whoever mocked you, mocked too soon. Whoever gave up on you, huh? I pity him. Because all through this month, the things they said you will never do, you begin to manifest in Jesus' name. The places they said you will never get to, you begin to step into it in Jesus' name. Listen, the most important part of that verse we just read, Isaiah 60, 1 to 2, as far as I'm concerned, is one word called arise. It's called what? Arise. Because if you look at the entire verse, everything else is the responsibility of God. The only one that is your responsibility is what? Arise. And I know we serve a God that does not fail. So if that equation is correct and you are not manifesting, it means you have not what? Arisen yet. Can we read that scripture again from the message version? What does it mean to arise? What does it mean to arise? Isaiah 60 verse 1. It says, get out of bed, Jerusalem. Wake up. Put your face in the sunlight. God's bright glory has written upon you. Awake. Put your face in the sun. Stop sleeping. Everything has been made available unto you. As you arise, God will move in your direction in Jesus' name. I like how message Bible put it. He said, get out of bed. Be sleeping. Yes, soon. You have been sleeping for two. Once you get out of bed, I will get into your situation. I speak over your life and over your destiny. God steps into your situation in Jesus' name. So what are the mandates of light? How do we get out of bed? How do we arise? What are the things we must do so that our shining is not compromised? Very simple, if time permits me. I will state three of them. If I don't have time, we stop at two and then we go into our celebration. The first mandate of light is sonship. S-O-N-S-H-I-P. Sonship is the first mandate of light. Listen to me. Every light has a source. Every light has a source. John chapter 1 verses 3 to 5. John chapter 1, verses 3, 4, and 5. It says, All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 5. And that light shines in darkness, and darkness does not comprehend it. It's very simple. The source of your light is the life of God. If your light must shine, you must be connected to the life of God. What is connection to the life of God? Connection to the life of God is sonship. Anyone who is not saved, anyone who is not connected to the life of God that was offered to us at the cross of Calvary cannot shine this light. You can't fake this light. You can't be a sinner with a brother or sister title in church and shine the light. Yeah. This light is only meant for genuine sons and daughters. 
If your life on Sunday does not mirror your life on Monday to Saturday, you may be coming to church, but you won't carry this shiny light. The first mandate of this light is genuine sonship. A disconnection from the life of God guarantees a consistent reality of darkness. Let me say that again. A disconnection from the life of God guarantees a consistent reality of darkness. If for any reason at all, the source of this light is cut off, there's nothing anyone can do about it. That is why once you are disconnected, you are disconnected. The only way to shine light is to reconnect yourself back to God. I pray for the grace of reconnection this morning in Jesus' name. There's someone listening to what I'm saying and you know that I'm describing your case. You carried the light before, but at some point you were disconnected. Make up your mind that today is the day for reconnection. Connection to light is established through salvation and an active relationship with the Holy Spirit. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. He says, but the path of the what? The path of the what? The path of the just. The one who is just before God, who is the real son of God, is like a shining sun that shines even brighter onto the perfect day. I speak over your life and over your destiny. The shining of God comes upon you in Jesus' name. Yeah. A simple instruction. Please connect. Please connect. You cannot be connected and not be manifesting God's light. You cannot be disconnected and manifest this light. Connect. The second mandate of life, light is Rema. The second mandate of this shining light is what? Can everybody say Rema? One of the formidable sources of light is the dimension of Rema. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 13. Please give me from the amplified version. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 13. The amplified version. It says, but when anything is exposed and reproved by the light, it is made visible and clear. And where everything is visible and clear, there is light. What makes anything visible is the light, which is the rhema of the word. The rhema of the word gives light to every place of darkness. What makes anything visible is the light of the word of God. Therefore, what is rhema? What is rhema? What is the meaning of rhema? The simple definition of rhema is utterance or a said thing. Utterance or a said thing. So when you hear rhema, rhema simply means utterance. Or a said thing. Rema is the spoken word or the revealed word of God. The spoken or revealed word. I'm going somewhere this morning. Theology has established that the word of God is made up of two equal components. How many components? This word is made up of two equal components. One is the Logos, the written word. And the second is Rema, the uttered word. So every time you read the word of God, there are two portions of the word. The one you read is the written. The one that is spoken by the Holy Spirit, which is the mind of God for what you read, is called Rema. We believe they are equal. In dimension but it is only the rema part that gives light it is only the rema dimension of the word that gives light however the logos is important because without the logos you can't get to the rema do you understand what i'm saying now it is equal because without the logos you can't get to the rema but if you stop at the logos you have not finished the dimension of the word yet 
It is the realm of the word you read that brings light into that situation. Therefore, the logos is your own responsibility. The realm is God's responsibility. The logos is your responsibility. Because if you don't read, the rema will not come. How do you get into the dimension of the rema? Keep reading the logos. They are equal and combined parts. You can't have one without the other. So if someone is telling me, I've been reading my Bible, I've been reading my Bible, I'm not seeing anything. I'm here to tell you, you have not read it enough. If the logos happens to you, it comes to a point, rema will take over. They are the two active components. They are Siamese twins. You can't separate them. But you must enter the rema through the what? Through the logos. Do you understand what I just said? Hey, I just brought theology this morning. Now listen, there are three parts of the rema. I want you to write it down. There are three dimensions of the rema. I told you we are going to dance and celebrate. But let's visit the place of the word first. The rema portion has three dimensions. The first dimension of rema is life. Life. Every time you come into the place of rema, life is added to that situation you are facing. Life is automatically added. John 6 verse 63. John 6 verse 63. John 6 and verse 63. It says, it is the spirit who does what? It is the spirit who does what? Who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirits. And they are life. That is why sometimes you may not see what you are saying. Continue to say it. Take the word of God and say it. Because every time you say the word of God, the rema part of that word contains life. You may not see it, but something is happening in the supernatural dimension. I'm teaching you a deep revelation. Listen, I realize it is not what you say that really counts, but the revelation of what you are saying is what makes the difference. So if you are speaking to that situation, knowing that you are speaking life, life begins to happen. It's like a thirsty man that has been thirsty, let's say for 15 days, or let's say for 10 days, no water. And it looks like he's almost dead. The moment you pour water into his body, what happens? Life comes. Nothing comes in contact with the word and remains the same. Nothing comes in contact with this word and remains the same. Therefore, throughout this season of shining more and more, please stand on the word of God and speak the word of God. Uh, Christians, we are used to speaking our emotions. We want it, but we are doing it the wrong way. Every time you are faced with a challenge that is not pleasant to you, please speak the word. Because one of the parts of Rema is life. The second part of Rema is faith. The second part of Rema is faith. Whenever you sit on the word of God and Rema happens to you, it puts faith into your spirit. The reason why a lot of people fail in the dimension of faith is because they have not stepped into the dimension of Rema yet. When you see a man that has gotten Rema, he's like a madman or a drunkard. He does not explain what he feels to you because he's moving via the vehicle of faith. Why does he believe the impossible? Because there's a dimension of the rema he has received that has ignited faith into his spirit. The man of faith doesn't make sense to the common man. The man of faith moves via the platform of rema. Just like we live with air, you take away air from our nose reel, we die. The same way when you see a man who is a giant in this kingdom, a man that does impossible things, he moves via that dimension of rema. He has enough faith, not because he's believing it. It's not belief. It's faith that he has contacted via the rema dimension of the world. The scripture says without faith, it is literally impossible to please God. The third dimension of Rema is power. 
The third dimension of Rema is what? If you are writing your notes there, you will know that Rema is made up of three parts. What are the parts? Number one. Number two. Number three. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. I want you to follow me this morning bumper to bumper because you are not escaping this season without the visitation of God. For the word of God is living and powerful. And sharper. You saw life there. You saw power there. All right. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. And is a designer of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. The word of God is living, but not only living, it is what? Powerful. That means you can say a thing via the place of Rema and it shall be so. Because every rema carries the dimension of power. We can call a spiritual force and it starts to act naturally and physically. I'll tell you the story of a young lady who was in campus, very beautiful lady, and a lecturer wanted to go to bed with her. Most lecturers in this realm of the world, they are good honest and amazing people but like you know in every setting there must be one black sheep and this man kept on doing like this you know you know now and she was a daughter of zion not ready to mess herself up and you know lecturers if they if they want a thing they know how to they have to get it and he kept on pushing and forcing and pushing and when he got to a point, he held her script, denied her of her mark. She got to a place of exhaustion. And she got into a place of anger. And she told the lecturer, if I be a child of God, by this time tomorrow you are dead. And he said, get out of my office. See, Rema carries power. Except you don't activate the Rema dimension. And I told you, you can't get to Rema without going through the... So Rema is hard work. This dimension of Rema is not made for lazy Christians. Only Christians that come and they, all they do is receive what daddy is saying. No, you must sit on the word of God and do it. She went into her room, knelt at her quiet place, and said, God, I take his life away from him. I take his life I. You see, when the lemma enters into your spirit, man, you understand that power can change everything. Power can change. In fact, the only language understood in the supernatural and in this earthly realm is the language of power. The next morning, everybody was crying. Lecturer so, so, so slept and refused to walk up. She got to the department and said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now I have access to my results. All through this month, it shall be a season of power dimension for you in Jesus' name. I want to do something this morning. All eyes closed and all heads bowed. All eyes closed and all heads bowed. Before we go into the place of celebrating and dancing i sense it in my spirit that there's some people that should come to the cross this morning i told you that the first requirement of the mandate of light is sonship the first mandate is the mandate of sonship no connection to the life of god no manifestation of light you have listened to the words i said this morning and you want to connect with that source of light you want to manifest the power dimension of this light as all eyes are closed and all heads are bowed. You know you have been suffering from, from some spiritual activity. You don't have the power to deliver yourself. You don't have the power to liberate yourself. It happened that way to your father. It happened that way to your grandfather. Now it's happening to you that way. It happened that way to your grandmother. It happened that same way to your mother. Now you are going through the vicissitudes 
of that battle, it is time to give your life to Christ. As all eyes are closed and all heads are bowed, Pastor, I want to be connected to that life that creates light. Please raise up your hands. If I see your hands, I will connect you to that light this morning. Raise up your hands. Raise up your hands. Wherever you are, raise up your hands. Please, I don't want you to think about anybody. It's about your destiny and your life. It is about your destiny. Can I see your hands up? Somebody wants to join. He's still considering his life and his destiny. Don't consider your life. Don't consider your destiny. Your life is at stake. Please, if you are raising up your hands, take your Bible and your things and come to the altar. Take your Bible and your things and come to the altar. Come to the altar. We do this openly so that the light is established. The scripture says, if you deny me in public, I will deny you before my Father in heaven. I want you to take your Bible and your things and please come forward. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You cannot be forced. I see people coming. I see people coming. People who didn't even raise their hands, they are coming. I want you to understand that your life is at stake. My question is, do you want to continue with that trauma? Do you want to continue with that pain? Do you want to continue with that struggle? Or do you want the power of God to take over? It's like a heavy load and a heavy burden. You have been managing by yourself. But the reality is you don't have to struggle the way you have been struggling. I want the church to stretch out their hands to these amazing people and begin to join your faith with their faith and encourage them in the place of prayer. I want you to say these words after me. Say, my heavenly father, I come before you this morning. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for saving me. I have heard the word and I lay my life at your feet. Jesus, wash my sins with your blood. Jesus, write my name in the book of life. I promise you, I will follow you totally for the rest of my life. Jesus, thank you for connecting me with the light of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Please let me pray for you this morning. I pray for you this morning. As you have confessed before God, heaven carries you on in Jesus' name. Amen. You are not going to exact stress or labor anymore. Amen. The wings of God will carry you through. Amen. I break every yoke upon your life and upon your destiny. Amen. What made others stumble will not bring you down. Amen. From the rest of the day, you will manifest the light of God. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please open your eyes and look at me. Congratulations. I'm here to tell you that what you are doing today, I did it many years ago. Nobody is standing in this kingdom without doing what you did. However, you are like a child. You can't survive alone except we assist and we help you. We are going to take you to a corner now. We are going to speak to you. You are coming back for a Bible school, short Bible school. We are going to put you inside the water next week Sunday. What you did now is not complete until you do water baptism. Water baptism is next week Sunday after the second service. So bring a cloth with you next week Sunday when you are coming to church. The baptism is at the back of the church. We'll baptize you and heaven will start the most powerful experience you have ever experienced. You are blessed. You are lifted. Because I want you to look at that daughter of God. She's beckoning at you. Follow her. Follow her. Follow her. She will talk to you the more. Church, are we celebrating or not? Hallelujah.